Hey everybody, it's Stephanie. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to go for a glowy fall, almost winter look. That's my, that's my goal. We'll see how it goes. This is what it looks like in my sister's backyard from where I'm sitting when it's past the beautiful fall leaves and heading into winter time. Still not a bad view. Anyway, that was just a little bonus. I'm so happy to be here with my family during Christmas. I was planning to use uh, my e.l.f. halo glow and I can't find it. I don't know where it is. Sort of moving around that I've done and stuff. I, I can't find it. Oh, that's daunting. I love that stuff. The base for my glowy look today is going to have to be this L'Oreal Infallible Pro Glow Foundation. So if we have to go for the consolation prize, this is still excellent. So. We're gonna use this today and a few other products and maybe a few more surprises from my sister's makeup kit. So here we go. I'm gonna start with some, that light coming in is annoying. My usual color correction. Today I'm going to use this L'Oreal True Match. This is the super blendable correcting concealer in the shade Peach. This also comes in other shades including orange, which I have. This actually belongs to my sister. So I'm gonna use it today and, hi Jazzy. But it is a very nice, it's my sister's dog, Jazzy. I don't have the heart to tell them to get out of here. This corrects really well and it is very creamy. So I'm gonna leave that alone. I'm not gonna blend it or anything because I'm gonna cover it with my foundation. I am going to use my Stila palette. This is a correct and conceal. It's excellent. It's obviously high end, but I'm going to use the green concealer to shade out the redness in my nose. Just a little extra help there. Somebody said to me that when they start seeing me doing contouring, they think she doesn't need all that. And I thought that was really nice. <laughs> I thought that was really nice <laughs> to say that, that someone doesn't think I need to contour my nose or whatever. <laughs> because you know, we see each other, We sorry, we see ourselves differently than maybe other people see us. So the fact that somebody isn't looking at my face going, dang, look at that conch. She has got a large snoz. And believe me, I've had people say that to me before. Sometimes people aren't very nice. So I am sensitive about it, and I, um, I like to make it look not quite so prominent. We're gonna move on to the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Glow Foundation. This is in the shade Creamy Natural. And this is supposed to be up to 24 hours. I've never tested it for 24 hour wear. A lot of times I will, um, I'll just wear makeup for a certain, like if I'm gonna go somewhere and then I immediately take it off. I'm a big fan of not wearing makeup all the time. I, I've never tested it for how long it wears. I probably should try that someday, huh? Is I'm just gonna tap it around my face to start. And then I'm going to blend it with a sponge. We'll start with that much and see how we do. All right, I think, I think I'm gonna just leave that alone. I'm not gonna add any more. I can see a little bit of texture. My skin's been a little dry since I've been here. I think that'll do it for now. I'm not going for a heavy look, but I am gonna use a little concealer. Since I'm going for the glow, I'm gonna grab this Revlon Color Stay Skin Awaken 5-in-1 Concealer, and, and this is the shade Universal Brightener, 
And this is, um, ooh, baby, I like this. This is, a, this is so lovely. The, the Revlon Colorstay products are amazing. Again, I haven't tested them to see in terms of do they really stay. Uh, I just like the way they go on the skin. I like the way that they do not cake or look dry on mature skin. So that is a big deal. If you can get a product that doesn't make your skin look cakey or dry or settle into things, that's huge. So got some things peeking through there. I'll go back and add more in a little bit if I still need to. But I can see that the under my under eyes are kind of irritated today, so I'm gonna just leave it alone. Since I'm gonna do my brows. I'm gonna use this e.l.f. Brow Lift. It is $6 and it is a very inexpensive product to keep your brows in place, which is a necessity for me. I can't tell you how many times I've gone to the store or gone in public or something and wasn't paying attention and I'll get to my car and I'll adjust the rear view mirror and I'll see like big old hairs like dirt you know grumpy old men type brows just sort of wired all over the place and I'm like oh my gosh it's so embarrassing not that anybody's really paying attention but you know what I mean so it's nice to have something not expensive that will keep my brows in place I've been using castor oil on my eyebrows and I'm convinced that my eyebrow hair is growing back. I'm having to fill them in less and less. I, I, I'm kind of astounded. The, my eyebrows are sparse or they have been very sparse. I'm quite stunned at the volume or, or the appearance of brows right now because it wasn't like this. Wow. Alrighty, I'm gonna do a little contouring now. I am not gonna take it easy with contouring today. I am going to use this NYX, the Jumbo Eye Pencil in the color Milk, and I'm gonna use this here and really kind of knock out some of those shadowy areas. And this is, it might seem kind of extreme, but it works, and if it works, that's all I care about cancel some of that darkness there. This is very creamy. It's an it's supposed to be used for the eyes obviously so a little extreme huh my mouth is a little droopy so I learned a trick from Wayne Goss. He's an excellent cotton, he's an excellent makeup artist. So if you, sorry, if you add, if you put a little bit of light around the corners of your mouth, it'll hopefully give it the appearance of not being quite so droopy. Next, I'm gonna take my NYX Wonder Stick Dual End Face Shaper. This is nice, it has a contour side and it has a highlight side. I hardly ever use that end, but I do sometimes for eyeshadow. But I'm gonna go ahead and use this today. I'm gonna start here, I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Contouring is amazing. <laughs> So my goal here is to give the illusion that my nose is not quite so you know, wide. I like to give it a, sort of give it the illusion that it's more narrow than it is. And not quite as long. And then not quite as hooked or 
sloped. You know, to be honest with you, if, if I'm going somewhere and I'm putting makeup on, I don't usually go through all of this. I'm just, I'm doing it for these videos because it's fun to play with it and to record it. Um, but I usually don't go through all this trouble. I, not to this extreme anyway. <laughs> so. YouTube has kept me in the land of the living in the last several months, so. And then I'm gonna start up here at my temple and move toward the front of my face instead of down. I do not want anything sloping downward. So I'm gonna do this. Today's a heavy contour day, can you tell? And then I'm gonna do, I don't, I don't, thankfully so far, I don't really have a lot of jowly action going on, but I do have a little. So I just come in here and sort of shade it out a little bit, little pockets. Right there. And then I sort of minimize my chin a little. I remember when I was younger hearing that your nose and your chin never stop growing. And I didn't really care about my chin. But when I heard that about my nose, I was a little, oh, please God, no. But it's actually, I think it might be true. My chin has gotten longer. And I can tell by looking at pictures of myself when I was younger, it does seem more prominent. Maybe it's maybe it's because our face falls. I don't know. Anyway, I'm on here. I'm in here talking about all these things because we're talking about makeup today. But it's not something I just sit and dwell on all day long. Just so you know. <laughs> oh, now I'm going to go down the center of my nose. You know, it's it's. You know what's kind of interesting to me is, you know, we when we do things, we we when we improve our appearance or you know if there's something about our appearance we don't like, um, and we want to make it look better so we can feel better, I don't think there's anything wrong with that at all. We're the ones that have to feel comfortable in our own skin, right? So, interestingly enough, my um, for example, my sister, and I know like my best friend. You know, she's, you know, when they've wanted to improve certain things about their looks and their husbands are like, no, I like it. Don't, don't do anything. I think that is wonderful. And I think it's something to take, take into, you know, take into consideration, you know, that, you know, to give ourselves a little break, you know, if we really think something is awful or I'm going to add a little light up here too. To maybe reevaluate that maybe it doesn't, maybe it's not as bad as we think. I say that as I'm massively contouring my face. <laughs> I'm going to start out by blending out the light areas. I'm going to use this sponge. switch to a contour brush here my sister is gifting me with a haircut and professional professional haircut and color on Tuesday which I'm really stoked about <laughs> I haven't had a good cut and color for a long time and my hair um, has been really dry and it it could use a little help right now, so I am so grateful for that. To have, you know, a nice color, maybe something that doesn't look quite so blah or something not as drying, you know, the, the good salon. I'm product. excited to have my hair cut and colored on Tuesday. I 
I love my sister. This is a small makeup brush. It's dense, but it's very soft and it's great for moving contour around. I've had this brush for a long time and I kind of forgot about it. And I I was I found I was just going through my brushes the other day and I thought, "Why have you neglected this?" It is just a really nice brush for foundation. I have a bigger one too. This is through the company Pharmacy. But you can get these brushes, you know, anywhere really. I remember when they first came on the market, they were all the rage and I picked up a couple and I am glad that I did even though it seems like I haven't really used them. I just forgot that I had them. So I am taking the contour that's around my chin area and that looks, that looks, don't worry, I'm gonna fix it. Anyway, I'm taking it and I'm pushing it down onto my neck and blending it into my neck. I've got contour product a little bit too high up, so I'm gonna fix that. A sponge. Contouring is supposed to look natural, not ridiculous. But I like contouring. I, see, I can already tell that my face has light. It has sort of that, you know, sun-kissed sort of look going on there. The key is to get the desired effect without it looking like you contoured or being obvious and more natural, you know, contouring to give you your face a natural shape, not a made up cakey obvious shape. Blend out what I did to my nose. What I'm gonna do now is I am going to take this is, I've got, clearly I've used a lot of this. This lavender powder here is excellent for setting it contour. It would be optimal if I didn't have this in a pressed powder. So I'm just going in and I'm just kind of scraping, I'm scraping it and creating a loose powder out of it. And I'm gonna use this little finger sponge that I have here that I got at the dollar store. And I'm just gonna go in and I am going to add quite a bit. I'm gonna really kind of pack that on. It's gonna seem like an awful lot, but it bakes into that area and sets it. And then when you you let it sit there for a little bit and then you go, and brush it off. So I like it because it really does sort of, it sets it in there and then when it's taken away, um, it does, it, it's not gonna look like this. So it's gonna look a little bit ghostly for a minute, but not for long. I'm just gonna let it sit there. That's baking. I'm gonna be gutsy and daring today and I'm gonna use this e.l.f. No Budge Cream Eyeshadow. And this, is in the shade, this is the shade Crayon, and it's sort of an orange color. This 
is a very stiff shadow. I've tried to use it with my fingers, to apply with my fingers. It's very, very stiff. I use sort of a more stiff eyeshadow brush. This is actually a concealer brush, but it's stiff enough with enough give to where I can use this and it will, will apply nicely. I take it right from the pot. You do not need a primer with this eyeshadow. <laughs> it's very stiff. I, I tried using, I actually have primer on my. So with, with this eyeshadow, the right brush, and you working with it while it's still malleable enough is the key. So I'm gonna take just a little bit more and put it up here. Now I'm going to take this pharmacy eyeshadow crease brush and I'm going to try to push it around a little bit and thin it out, sheer it out. Am I losing my light? Oh no. Shearing it out at the top. Really like this. When I've used this before, I've had some accidental, really beautiful looks. And when I've tried to deliberately create looks, they've been disasters. So we'll see how it goes today. I'm going to revisit this Revlon Color Stay Day to Night eyeshadow quad. This belongs to my sister. It's, I can tell she's used a lot of it but I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to incorporate this plum color, and I'm also going to add some shimmer to the lid, so let's see how this works out. I gotta be very careful. I'm just gonna start up here like sort of halfway under my eyebrow, and then sort of create a V now the thing about the thing about this orange shadow here because it is so stiff it makes it hard to push around other uh, products over the top of it I've found so that's one thing that I don't like about it I'm gonna take this it cosmetics eyeshadow brush and quickly before it starts to become immovable Okay, let's try the other side and see if I can get it to match. Okay, I'm gonna try to sweep away some of that powder this is a Nick Cosmetics powder brush. Now I'm gonna add some shimmer to the lid. Again, I'm gonna use this It Cosmetics travel size eyeshadow brush, and I'm gonna go in with, I'm gonna use this color today, this one right here. I love shimmer. I don't care if I'm almost 60. Women your age shouldn't wear shimmer. People and their opinions. 
I do have a little fallout going on here that I'm not super thrilled about. I'm gonna see if I can gently whisk it away. I do not like shimmer in my lines and wrinkles. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some light to under my brow. No, 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 no. Oh no. Are you eating my sponges? No. No. I'm gonna grab my um, It Cosmetics Naturally Pretty Palette. Use this pharmacy dual-ended brush. No. I am going to grab this shade here. It's called Wonder. And I am going to I'm going to use this as a under my brow lighter and I'm also going to use it I'm going to sort of tone down some of the harsh a little bit too harsh up there I'm going to use this Bare Essentials full edge liner brush again I'm going to go back to my naturally pretty essentials palette and I'm going to grab this or this matte shade that looks a lot like what I just put on my eyes and this is the shade in tree not it doesn't have any shimmer to it whatsoever and i also have enough fallout under my eye right now i don't need any more going to pop some mascara on very quickly. I'm going to use the Essence Lash Princess in the False Effect. This is a really nice mascara and it's very inexpensive. It's $4.99. I'm feeling that irresistible urge to bronze. So, Laura Geller, Baked Bronze and Brighten, my favorite bronzer. I'm gonna take this pharmacy powder brush today and use it. Bronzer fixes everything. Bronzer is medicinal. So I'm just bronzing, bronzing, go in here. Since I've been using this castor oil, I'm serious, I, I don't have as many sparse areas and um, usually eyebrows are, the eyebrow thing is intimidating to me. Practice, practice. I've had my brows done at like the Macy's makeup counter and at Ulta before and oh my gosh, whew, those girls know what they're doing. All right, so uh, I get some lip color and then some blush and then I think we'll be done for the day. I'm gonna line my upper lip to see if I can give it some volume. This is the Essence Soft and Precise Lip Pencil. Okay, that's enough lining. Today I'm going to use my favorite lip gloss in all the world, the NYX Butter Gloss, and this is in the shade Madeline. These glosses are about $5, and I tend to be allergic to whatever lip, whatever, whatever ingredients they put into glosses or moisturizers. I'm, it irritates my lips 
badly. There's very few that I can use that don't irritate my lips. This one does not, and it's affordable, and it's gorgeous. Love it. I'm going to stay with a, sort of a brown tone, brown peachy tone for blush. This is a pharmacy brand. This is in the shade Terracotta. I'm gonna take this Pharmacy Dual End brush here. This is a kind of a fluffier, light brush because I don't wanna to add too much. I wanna go light-handed. I like to put blush over my nose. I like to sweep it across my face. I feel like it looks more natural. Put some down here, around my neck, around my forehead. I was going to try to remove my headband, but no. Um, what do I think of this makeup? I like my lips. I like my brows. I like my eyelids. I'm not sure if I'm a fan of this. Uh, I like the bronzer and the blush. I think overall it looks pretty good. It's a lot of makeup for me, so um, I haven't decided. I haven't decided if I like this today. When I'm wearing heavier makeup than I normally do, um, I don't know why I feel uncomfortable with it. This is just for, you know, demonstration purposes, but I like the scheme. I think that my, I think where I have a little tr bit of trouble is, you know, my application, my, my skill with application, although I don't think it's terrible. I think it's, um, I would just like to be able to be more confident in how I apply how I apply makeup. I think I'm going to have to do something about that. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys for stopping by and watching. I really appreciate you.